And we're ready to roll. Hi, I'm Anna Gibbs and it's Monday morning and this is your Monday morning mojo. So thanks for joining me this morning. I am happy to report in the Northeast here in the US. You know, we have people, I just wanna say, on this Monday Morning Mojo group, we have people in other countries. I was just looking at our membership last night, and that's pretty exciting. And we have people from all over the U.S. on here, too. So here in the Northeast, it's snowing. We got about six inches of snow, so it's a pretty view outside my window. And uh, I'm happy you're here. Thanks for getting up early with me this morning to get your week started off right. And um, I'm just really excited that we can come together like this every week and that this continues to grow. And uh, I trust you're finding a lot of great stuff here. So this morning, I want to talk to you a little bit about how to declutter your mind. And the last several weeks, we've been talking about productivity and how uh, different things that we approach through our goals uh, and our habits really determine our level of success and how to increase our productivity. And um, I thought it was really important to talk about this topic. You know, it's funny, usually in January, I think a lot of us are looking to declutter our house, right? Many of us have decorated for the holidays and we put all that away and we clean and then we start thinking about reorganization and maybe even, um, you know, just decluttering and getting rid of stuff and, and purging things. And uh, even it's funny, I've always loved magazines. So now I, I do subscribe to some magazines digitally, even articles in magazines are talking about that, right? And you can uh, see different ads now for like the container store, and it's all about getting organized in your home. Well, here's the thing, guys, we have to declutter our minds too. And we have to get organized in the way that we're thinking because clutter is not just in the physical form. I think that we can have a cluttered mind and that could really get in our way of being effective and productive and achieving our goals. So how do we, uh, first of all, how do we get clear about the state of our mind in the first place? And how do we understand um, what I mean by a cluttered mind? So what I mean is that if you're ruminating or getting stuck on something, playing it over and over in your head, whether it has to do with you know, career or personal, uh, then you might need to declutter your mind. If you find yourself focusing on the negative, if you find yourself feeling anxious, if you find yourself worrying, especially about things that are clearly out of your control, if you're holding on to any negative emotion, sadness, anger, like I said, anxiety, past hurts, resentment, uh, you're carrying all those memories and, and really allowing those things to, to make you feel some type of negative emotion, it's time to declutter your mind. If you're keeping a mental to-do list in your head and not on paper, definitely time to declutter the mind. There's a, <clears throat> excuse me, a saying, <coughs> pardon me, a saying I have that you have to be able to, you know, download, you have to be able to mind dump on paper. So if you find that you're carrying around a lot of those ideas and, and to do's in your head, it's definitely time to declutter. And the other thing that probably would be an indication that it's time to declutter, if you find yourself getting really distracted, and, and I get it, we're all, we're all prone to this, right? And distractions are, are part of our environment. Sometimes I talked about this um, maybe last week on Mojo, <clears throat> but I think that if you really find that you're lacking focus and it's getting in your way of being productive, you probably need to declutter your mind. Because when your mind is cluttered, you're just not here, right? When your mind is cluttered, you're not present. So that's why this is so important. Um, and I think that when we are not present, we can find ourselves straying from our own environment. <clears throat> we can find ourselves not connecting with what we need to do at any moment or with the people in our own environment, with our relationships, right? It creates the spiral effect. And so that's why I think this is important because the mental habits we develop are a huge key to our success right? The mental habits, how we treat our, our own mind and how we develop our thinking is how we can reach our full potential. So that's why I think this is an important conversation. So it's about building some mental muscles. I want to talk to you this morning about building mental mu muscles 
decluttering your mind so that you can get more intentional about where you are and where you want to be, paying attention to what's important, paying attention to what's important, and how you spend your time. See, because sometimes I think we can get a little numb to how we're spending our time. And <clears throat> excuse me, guys, you know, it's early morning winter here. Um, and we can we can lose sight of, of the things that we really are putting in our priorities. And we can, we can lose sight of how we're spending our time and finding ourselves, you know, maybe becoming a couch potato or not focusing on our routines like exercise and, and uh, putting time in the first thing in the morning to, you know, getting organized. And that's why this is really important. So if you're taking notes, I'm going to give you maybe 10 or 12, see how much time we have this morning, uh, tips for you to declutter your mind. And the first one, we've been talking about this a lot in my, in my home. Uh, my husband and I have been chatting about this. Uh, and he just shared a podcast with me on uh, practicing good sleep. And I'm going to put it on the Facebook page today. Um, so that's the first one is get some sleep. I am learning more and more how important this is. As I have turned 50, I can tell my body's changing and it's, it's time to embrace really how healthy sleep is. And so I want you to take a minute and think about what is your typical sleep pattern, not just how many hours of sleep you're getting, but are you getting deep sleep? Because when you're getting deep sleep, the REM sleep, that's when you're really able to uh, you know, rejuvenate the mind. And so this is a huge part to mental fit, fitness, health, uh, brain health, mental fit, fitness. So if you're not getting enough sleep or you're not getting the right quality of sleep, it can affect you. And that is, is going to really um, make it where you have an inability to just think clearly and to think cognitively and to think strategically. So I'm going to share this podcast with you on the uh, Mojo page today that I found uh, that was really, uh, that hit some key points. The second thing that may help you to declutter your mind is meditation. And, and the thing about meditation, it doesn't have to be a long process. I know some people find that they can meditate for 30, 60 minutes. Uh, they talk about how you know therapeutic it is and transcendental it is, and, and that, that is true. However, I'm talking about even five minutes to take some time to, deep, to do some deep breaths, and to just shut your mind down, five minutes. And if you um, have never been able to meditate before, just keep trying. It's something that you get better at. Um, and, and this can really help you get unstuck. And if you could commit to a daily practice, just a few minutes a day, I think that you will find that um, the clarity that comes from that, uh, just even dialing down the nervous system a little bit, um, can be huge. So I practice this often throughout the day and uh, I, I'm running at the speed of light. So like many of you, and, and sometimes it's just a minute or two to sit back in my chair, take a deep breath, close my eyes and try to shut it down and, and become aware of what I'm thinking. And sometimes when you become aware of what you're thinking, you can redirect it. And so uh, I think taking the time to practice a little meditation throughout the day can have huge health benefits for you. And it can really build into a longer practice if you want, um, but it, it, has, it has a lot of um, opportunity for you to get clear on your priorities. So I think that's one that's important. Okay, so the third tip I have for you, which I just alluded to and I called it mind dumping, it's just transferring your thoughts to paper. So some of you may not really be big on journaling and that's okay, but if there's a lot of stuff rattling around in your head, that can cause a lot of mental confusion. And you may not even realize the effects that it's having on you because we are operating at this state all the time. So until we get on the other side of it and look back, we really don't appreciate just how great it can be for us to just get all these thoughts out on paper, right? Mind dump it out. Um, because when it's swirling around in your head, 
it, it also can have an effect on you being indecisive because you've got so many things that you're thinking about. And so if you're able to put it on paper, it gets it out of your head. You can look at it on that piece of paper. You can make decisions about what's important and what might not be important. You can prioritize it and categorize it in a way that is sometimes is difficult when it's in your head. And the thing that you have to understand, our thoughts shape our, our feelings, right? Because the way that we think is how we tend to feel. And so think about this. If you've got all this stuff in your head, could it help? Could it make you feel anxious? Could it make you feel overwhelmed? So mind dumping gives you clarity. Mind dumping gives you clarity and it declutters your mind in the process. It's literally cleaning out your mental closet, right? So if you've ever opened your closet and you're like, oh my gosh, I can't even look, it's chaos. That sometimes is the same thing in our mind. And so getting it on paper is a way for you to clear out space. And so when you clear out space, you can get more creative, right? That's where new ideas come up and you can really create headspace to, to find solutions or be more strategic in your thinking. So that's huge mind dumping. And, and I guess, you know, in, in tandem with mind dumping is what I mentioned a minute ago, journaling. If you want to create a practice around writing out some more thoughts than just like to do's or, or things that are kind of in your head and you want to be able to journal. I think journaling is really cathartic when you're feeling any kind of negative emotion. If you're feeling any kind of anxiety or sadness, then, then even if it's not something you're going to do every day, just grab a paper and a pen and start writing. And just, you know, allow yourself to kind of, you know, throw up on the paper, if you, if you will, and give yourself an opportunity to explore what you're thinking and explore what you're feeling. You can put anything you want on that piece of paper or in that notebook because it's yours. If you want to type it out, that's fine too. Although I'll always tell you there's, um, I think, a really amazing process with pen and paper because there's this deep connection to your mind when you're writing. Um, and so journaling can be really therapeutic and it can give you this, this release of some of those emotions and give you an opportunity to organize your thoughts. And then you could burn it if you wanted to, <laughs> right? You, you could get rid of it and purge it in a way that's very physical if you're interested in doing that. Um, and there's a lot of um, online uh, apps and, and tools for journaling too, if you're not into the writing. Um, okay, so so uh, tr transferring thoughts to paper, right? Mind dumping, journaling. The, the, the thing that's important about the mind dumping, and I, I did say this a minute ago, but I just want to reiterate, is make sure that you prioritize and recategorize whatever it is that you put on that paper. So something that I have said for um, years in coaching, if you're going to get into the mind dumping, many of you have different priorities, different perspectives in your life, like your career, uh, family life, maybe you have, um, you sit on a board or, you know, you lead an organization or, or your, you know, your kid's sports team, whatever it might be. So sometimes I've said, if you want to take your paper and fold it into four boxes or six columns, whatever, then you can, as your mind dumping, you can put things in their own, their own category. Right. So if it's a thought around work, OK, that goes in this box. If it's something that you need to do or you want to do for, you know, because you're the director of the Girl Scouts, you can put it in that box. So that may be another tip for you. OK, so the other tip that I have for you around decluttering your mind, we talked about this, I think, two weeks ago on Mojo, and it's to get away from multitasking. Multitasking is a myth. We really can't do more than one thing effectively at a time. And so if we continue to try to do that and try to juggle, we can create a lot of stress in our lives. And I think that it's important to just connect that back here, that uh, it's really about managing our time and knowing that we time block for one activity at a time. Because if we're trying to do too much at once, that creates a lot of that chaos in our mind. So uh, if you want to avoid creating that mental clutter, then let's break the, the, the habit of multitasking because that can be, be huge. Um, the other thing that can tend to clutter our mind is our own decision-making process. And I think that for some of us, naturally, we are uh, more quick <clears throat> to make decisions. Some of us are able to do that very intuitively. 
uh, and others need a lot of time to process. Well, just be aware that if you are someone who needs a lot of time to process when it comes to making decisions, if you need to think about it and sit on it, um, that's fine. But I would just be aware of how much is enough time, because the longer you think about it, the more cluttered and overwhelmed your thinking can become. And so procrastination pops up when that happens, right? And so if we're holding back from pulling the trigger, if our decision-making process is really just an avoidance to making the decision, then that can cause a lot of clutter in our thinking. Um, and that can just turn to analysis paralysis. So I think that's another thing to be aware of if you wanna really create good habits around decluttering your thinking, decluttering your mind. Um, the other thing is really looking at our thinking and challenging any thought that comes in that might be negative, challenging any thought that comes in that might be limiting us, creating worry, right? Because all of that is going to pile up. All those negative emotions are going to pile up and it can create a lot of clutter in our thinking. It creates less and less mental space. And so I think that if you take one thing away from this morning, it's that you have to challenge your mindset. You have to challenge your mindset in order to change your mindset, mindset, right? So in order to change it, we have to challenge it. And we have to ask ourselves, is what I'm thinking real? Is this really accurate or have I distorted it somehow? Right? So it's about being aware that we might be in a pattern of negative self-talk, that we might be in a pattern of limited thinking. And so that we can challenge ourselves to gain a different perspective and move in a more positive direction, right? And I've talked about practicing gratitude and compassion because gratitude is one of, it's really the highest vibration. When we are in a state of gratitude, we're very, very positive, right? So if we're in that habitual feeling of gratitude, it offsets and pushes away a lot of negative thinking. So, so those are all checks and balances. Those are ways that you can create a much healthier environment in your own mind. Okay. So we're getting any good stuff. Okay, good. Here's another way to declutter your mind. Talk about what you're thinking. <laughs> Seems so easy, right? Seems pretty elementary, uh, but get it out. Get it out. We talked about putting it on paper. Well, maybe you need to talk to someone. So it could be hiring a coach. It could be talking to a peer. It could be sharing your thoughts and feelings with a loved one, a friend, someone you trust. But if you're, if you're in a pattern of feeling mentally overloaded, you have to release it. You have to be willing to share what's on your mind, get it off your chest, right? That's those, those are really powerful sentiments. So, um, and I will say this too, many of you are gonna worry that you're, burden, you're being a burden to someone. Please don't think that way. The people who care about you, whether they care about you professionally, personally, they want to know that they're there, that they can be there to help you. So, I mean, if you cared about someone and they and you knew that they were struggling, wouldn't you want them to call you? So just think about that, confiding in someone uh, and knowing who the appropriate person is to share your thoughts and feelings with, you know, is important too, is important too. But it's really about unloading those thoughts, unloading those feelings. And, and talking to someone who might be able to help you gain perspective and clarity. This is not about finding someone to sit around and complain about and complain to, right? We don't want to look at, because I believe that complaining is a garbage magnet. Sometimes you start complaining and everyone lines up and starts complaining <laughs> along with you. What I'm talking about is picking the right person who can actually help you sort it out. Who can help you, you know, think about what your feelings are, help you create some, some clarity, perspective, and prioritization to how you're feeling. So you're not just kind of circling around in the emotional windstorm of those thoughts and feelings. My other tip for you this morning goes back to how I opened this conversation, uh, that decluttering your environment is something that a lot of us look to do at this time of year and that it's not only your environment, it could be decluttering your mind, right? Well, I have to go back to make sure you do look around in your environment though. 
Because a cluttered environment can create chaos in our thinking. A cluttered environment can create anxiety, even low level anxiety you may not even realize is coming from the clutter around you. And, and so I think it's important that we just take a look at our environment, make sure our environment supports us um, because that can occupy mental space in our head too. Even just, you know, being, um, knowing that let's say you want to clean out your closets and that thought keeps popping in your head, it's a distraction, right? So just take a look at your environment. All right, last uh, couple, couple tips this morning before we end for today. Um, and this is something I'm working on. I need to work on more, full disclosure. Limiting our um, social media intake, limiting the amount of time that we're on devices, all of that can create havoc in our brain. And I think that um, we're bombarded by sensory overload all day long. Uh, and uh, I'm just going to isolate social media for a second. For some of us, being on social media can alter our state of reality, just quite simply. I think that many people are looking at their social media platform as a way to show you a life that they wish to have instead of the life that they are having. I think that sometimes the messages can get overwhelming and confusing. Uh, I think there's a lot of good that can be... Um, created through a social media platform like Monday Morning Mojo for one. Uh, but we just have to limit. We just have to limit how much we're really sucked in by that because that can definitely clutter our thoughts and our feelings. And our feelings can get triggered by some of the things that we're seeing on social media as well. Um, and then just, you know, devices in general, there's a lot of research right now about the effect uh, that that can have on our brains. And so just, you know, and it's become such a big part of our world. It's a challenge right now uh, that started almost two years ago with uh, having to become more physically distant. So we rely on things like Zoom and, and other mediums like this. And so it is a challenge. So I think it's just, it's really being aware of the balance, just like, you know, I know when um, my kids were little, I tried to limit how much TV time they had, right? So we just have to look at, at that too. Um, and then I think we also have to realize the power of getting outside in nature. I know today may be a challenge to do that in our area, uh, but, but even still just to go outside and breathe in some, some clean, fresh, cold air can do a lot to just dial it down and re reduce the clutter as well. And definitely getting some exercise, you know, getting up from your chair, taking a walk, stretching, doing things, um, because that can give your brain the mental rest it needs as well. So I hope that these tips were helpful. Um, I think that if you were to review and I'll, I can put a, um, like a summary on the Facebook page for you too from this morning's conversation. I think that, you know, if you look at your list, pick one to start with, pick one right now that you would like to start with today and uh, focus on that today. And then you can add something else in a day or two. But I'd love to hear from anyone who's with me this morning, if you have any thoughts or comments about it. Um, and if you are on the Facebook page, would love to hear your thoughts and comments. Um, and if this was relevant for you. Rebecca, I'm picking on you because I can see your face. Thanks for joining me this morning. What did you get out of this this morning? You know, I love an aha. Well, I I truly love mind dumping. You know that um, you taught me that years ago and it definitely works. Um, I need to work on number one as well. I need to learn how to sleep um, a little bit more and multitasking. I really need to get that and the devices because, you know, we're on our we're on Zoom, I'm on the phone, I'm on FaceTime, I'm on whatever yeah. it is so much during the day um, that I need to take the breaks in between. I have to stop doing that boom, 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 mm -hmm. I think, um, you know, because I'm in one meeting and I'm like, oh crap, I got to get to the other one. And I think that makes me really crazy during the day. Yeah. And that's a challenge too, when we're not giving ourselves a chance to breathe, literally breathe from one, one appointment to the next one meeting to the next. And, and that's something I have to get better at too. Again, full disclosure, um, because there are days when I'm literally, you know, keeping my zoom room open and people are just coming in and out and I go from one meeting to the next and, and I'm able to do it. I, I've even had people ask me a comment on it. I have a, 
I guess a high tolerance for some of that. And I, I, I can move through the day, but I don't want to do that every day. And I have mm -hmm. to be honest that it would take a toll on me and does take a toll on me at some point. Right. And I think until, until we make changes and get on the other side of that behavior and look back, we're like, wow, I didn't even realize how that was affecting me. So, mm -hmm. um, so just pick one thing though, Rebecca, that you could work on because, you know, that's, that's a lot of stuff there that you just rattled off. So yeah, I think I'm where, where I really, yeah, the sleep is the, I think going to be the, the biggest help to get the other ones done. Yes. I think, uh, I I've become very purposeful around that one, you know, lowering the temperature in the bedroom, making sure it's dark at night, um, working on not being on the devices right before bed, like that, that is, it's huge to restore your, your mind absolutely and your health. So thank you, no, Jill. No. I saw you come off mute. Did you have something you wanted to add? Well, I always like to add a, a comment. Yes, I, I, like, I appreciate that. I know. I like the idea of putting the, the framework around sort of a, a diet, because if you truly want to be the best you, you've got to pay attention to what you've been sharing. And to do that, you've got to get committed to doing that. So to me, hearing the reminders is like, yes, if I really, really, really want to become better at, and more efficient, because that's you know ultimately the goal, you want to be more efficient at whatever you're doing, then applying it is really the step up. And I like the fact that we're starting the new year and it feels like you know we've got some goals and ideas that will then help along the way. So again, thank you. And it kind of repositions you know, the big message for the new year. Yeah, thank you for sharing. And I think, um, yes, I, that's why I wanted to have this conversation this morning. I believe that we all want to make 2022 the best year that we've ever had. And that's great. And how will we do that? And, you know, doing the same thing and expecting different results, we know the definition is insanity, right? And so we have to just take a look at our habits and, and the things that will affect our productivity. It's not, it doesn't just end with, I created these great goals and here I go. Well, how will you approach the goals and how will you work on your mindset and how will you identify ways to, like I said this morning, decluttering your mind is a huge opportunity for us to gain clarity and have the mental energy to, to achieve our goals. So thanks for sharing um, that this morning. All right. So listen, you guys, it is uh, just about eight o'clock. So I want to let you get on to the rest of your day. Thank you again for joining me. And if you find value in this Monday morning mojo every week and in the Facebook content that I share on the group, please share this with your friends. I'd love to see the group continue to grow. Um, so let's get over a thousand members as quickly as possible. So I'm going to challenge each and every one of you to invite a few people to it today and uh, let them know that this is something that they can plug into live on a Monday morning. They can watch it later through the Facebook page. It's always there. My YouTube channel has every episode. Um, so there's always a way to catch up on the content. But thank you again for being here. Have an awesome, powerful day. And I'll see you next week. Take care. Bye. Bye.